Coming up next, I would like to call upon Dr. Suneet Yannun, Secretary General of the Commission on Higher Education, on behalf of the Thai members of the ASEM Lifelong Learning Hub Advisory Board to present his Thailand's perspective. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank ASEM Education and Research Hub for lifelong learning for inviting me to this conference and also give me the very good opportunities to learn a lot from the speakers. Uh, I have on the schedule about 30 minutes. That means from 11.30 to noon. On my watch, I have left about 15 minutes, but I try to make the best effort you know, to finish by times. If not, please give me the apologies to, to interfere your lunch time. Uh, as you have seen the first two speakers, it's pretty interesting. We are trying to, to score the, the definition of lifelong learning and also the organization of lifelong learning hub and that's a little bit on the Hanoi Declaration and lifelong learning. My presentation is straightforward because I have to confess myself I'm not the expert in lifelong learning but what I try to present it will cover the very, very general practice, the overview of lifelong learning in Thailand. If you look at the, the definition you have heard, what I'm talking about, it might be not right from learning. So about three topics. First, I will give you the overviews of lifelong learning situation in Thailand and lifelong learning in the responsibilities of the Commission on Education at the Ministries of Education. And then the more important part is the how to use the ICT for lifelong learning in the case of Thailand. Lifelong learning is now a current concern for most of the countries, especially in Thailand. The whole spectrum of lifelong learning confirmed the importance of education and training that we can ensure the sustainable development of the countries. And in the Thai context, lifelong learning have at least two dimensions. One dimension is the vertical lifespan of the person. So education does not terminate at the times a person finishes the school, but continues through their life. And learning is acquired from formal non-formal and informal education. And the other dimension is concerned with the purpose of the lecture that the next session of the education reform we dedicated on the resources and policy leadership of the Ministries of Education for lifelong learning. And the most general lifelong learning project in Thailand. We, we are not the only one who take care of the lifelong learning in this country. There are at least four ministries working on this. Education, of course, Ministry of Interior, Labor, and the Ministries of Industries. For the Ministries of Education, uh, I'm focused on one of the most important office 
at the Ministries of Education. This is the Office of Non-Formal and Informal Education. In Thai, we call Go Sono, in short. I think everybody understands Go Sono better than the Office of Non-Formal and Informal Education. Uh, this office was established in 1979 as the main organization responsible for non-formal education. And by itself, it has the vision in building up the extensive intellectual society by promoting an access to quality lifelong learning among the people across the country. And this office have operated under three non-formal education program. We have the continuing education program. The first one is education for vocational development. Second, education for life skill development. And the third one, education for, for social and community development. The are three area of the, the uh, Office of Non-Formal and Informal Education. The second target of this office is the literacy promotion and the works on these for a long, long time. And the third one is basic education equivalencies program. You see we have the numbers more than one million people get access to this non-formal education we call the Basic Education Equivalency Program. And also this office provided not just the, the non-formal education, they also provide the informal education to at least three programs. The first one is Education Radio Program. They have also the public libraries, science centers, education, and they provided the, the education television program. This is the informal education program provided by the Ministry of Education under the Office of Non-Formal and Informal Education. For the Ministry of Interior, they established education in the corrections to provide learning opportunity for those who are in the prison, the prisoner. To best project, we have the project, vocational education project, basic education project, the recruitment of teacher and resource person from the prisoners project, they teach by themselves. And e-learning project, and the last one is education for an educated person in restricted area project. The Ministry of Industry, under the Department of Industry Promotion, they established 11 regional training centers throughout the countries. They provide training courses for the current workforce, like in English, computer management, for example. And Lifelong learning under the Commission on Education, this is my office, uh, is lucky enough, last two years, two years ago, the Commission on Higher Education just introduced the second long-term planning of higher education. It covered the year 2007 to the year 2000. 21st, the 15-year plan embraces an aggressive plan based on a clear understanding of the future trend and to prepare a plan that responds to the dynamisms of the global change and also the education environment. This plan also stress on the importance of lifelong learning. 
we recommend higher education institution to provide lifelong learning for the people, both after the retirement or within the workplace to develop new skill. And we recommend the Ministry of Education to take initiative to establish in the term of credit bank system. We assess the abilities of the people and put them in a credit. And also we open the passbook like a bank to accept some of those if they fulfill the own requirement for the degree, they can have a degree. And also we want to develop the use of ICT to support lifelong learning opportunities. And in fact, you know, for higher education system, we do very little on lifelong learning, so we have to go back and, and set up a policy framework for lifelong learning, especially for higher education. Uh, but in fact, we have two universities are now operated, and I think it's one of the, 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 the opportunity for the other people can get into higher education very easily. The first one is Sukhothai Thamathira Open University. The open university means it's open for all students who hold at least the high school certificate or equivalent. They can walk in, register, and study. For Sukhothai Thamathira Open University, this is the first distant education university without classroom. So they have to prepare a very good, the best textbook for self-study. And I see some of the university students, you know, they, they just buy the book from Sukhothai Thamathira to support their study in, in the, the close admission university. Second, Ram Kham Heng University. In fact, Ram Kham Heng University has been established before STOU. At Lam Kham Heng University, they take the same concept, but they provide teaching classroom. But it's, it's an optional. It not required every student to, to take that course. But they have to learn to self-study. And the last topic, I, I try to explain more in terms of how the Commission on Education use the ICT for the promotion of lifelong learning. We established two organizations. One is the UNINET. The other one is Thailand Cyber University Project. The UNINET means the, the networking the ICT networking of all higher education institution, campuses. When I say all, I mean all, but at this moment, we cannot connect to all private university. All, I mean, for public university. So for, for the UNINET, that means the infrastructure is go everywhere to the university campus, but TCU is a kind of support in terms of technical for e-learning by using the infrastructures of the UNINET. And so you see the two different. For UNINET, I would say it is the national ICT infrastructure for higher education institution connect every institution, quote unquote, except private university as for education and research. And it should be, and it now it's, it work as the central hub for connecting for international network. Uh, we, we have uh, two or three network internationally especially in research and education like the Internet 2 or Tian Tu.
You see, the connection is by, I, 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 I want to say something, it's, it really happened at this moment. It's the optic fibers. It's go to every university with 10 gigabit on the, what we call the, the, the main network or the backbone. And for international link, we have about 310 megabit per second to upper lean. The internet too, about 155 megabit to Los Angeles that we can connect directly from the Thai University to ONS of the American University by internet too. You see, this is the topology for 2000. 21, that means this is the Buddhist era, that means two years ago, until this year. Uh, I'd like to add some more information. All of this network is designed inclusively for higher education use, but the policies of the ministers of education in the next three years. We want to expand all of the network to every school, we have more than 36,000 schools across the country with a special budget. We try to finish it. Fiber to school in the next three years. This is a very important infrastructure for, for education, fiber to school. Let's take a look at TCU. Thailand Cyber University. We established this in 2005, and its mission is to enhance access to higher education to distant learning via UniNet. We have to work together with of the two projects to encourage the collaboration among Thai universities and effective sharing of educational resources. We want to use TCU upgrade and ensure the qualities of this standard education. In addition, TCU will be the core in exchanging and joining of the curriculums, syllabuses, among the universities and any educational institution. And again, the TCU would like to see it act at the center for transferring of knowledge credit. This is in relation to the concept of lifelong learning. Uh, the achievements of TCU at this moment, they work closely with about 39 universities in this country, and collects those universities to, to design and operate some e-learning programs that for the degree a bachelor degree, some, and a, a, a master, even a doctor degree. And by those collaboration with universities, we can come up with about 477 numbers of courses. The courses here, I mean, some of them related or is be parts of the degree program. Some are not that for lifelong learning, for entertaining, and for, you know, to increase the quality of lives of the clients. If we classify some of these topics in the international standards of education, it's covered wide lens of the discipline the university can provide. Like, for example, we have about nine courses related to education, science, and teacher training. 28 courses respond to some topic in humanities, religions, and theology. Some in fine arts, law. You see, the majority is in engineering, about 131. Accounted for about 27%. These are free of charge for all the people who want to upgrade themselves. 
Let's see some of the numbers distribution. And let's take a look at now. We have a lot of students or clients interested in joining us for self-study, self-paced. We have 114,000 registrations now. You see the difference in age from the category here, zero to 19. I don't think that the one who gets zero years old get into this group. It might be some 10 plus up to more than 58 years old. And the majority, about 38%, is in the group age of 27 to 39 years old. Let's take a look at the, the occupation of those clients from 114,000. See, the majority is a student. They are students in high school, elementary school, or even at university. 29% or 30,000, some that uh, the government officer and staff, and state enterprise, we have employees, sales employees, unemployed, and you know, identified about 22%. This is the graph indicated that. And if you classify by the levels of education of those students, I don't want to say student, but uh, for, for this purpose and say student. They study or, or even finished the primary education, about 3%, secondary education, about 10%. But the majority, 33%, they, they graduate the bachelor degree or during the study in the bachelor degree. You see, we have the, 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 those clients, some of them are the doctorate degree. In conclusion, I would say lifelong learning in this country is, is not the responsibilities of ministries of education. And I don't think the ministries of education can do that. But we operate among several sectors in this country. But for example, on my talk, I did not cover lifelong learning provided from private sector in Thailand. I think there might be the lots of those programs operating in this country. And not very long ago, a few years ago, we tried to use the ICT to support lifelong learning. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>